they're uh they're com they're a competing platform. But uh, I've been playing this Forza Four at 1080p ultra settings at over 60 frames per second, and it's just a um, it's just a different experience. I mean, I don't know what else to say. It's just much better. It's a cleaner game. It sounds it sounds a lot better. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's really different. Um, but um, yeah, they got to get Game Pass on PC. It's just something they have to do. The play <laughs> anywhere is trash. Complete got it. So um, the, the, your Game Pass, my Game Pass ID does not transfer over to PC. So I'm stuck playing Microsoft's first party games, which are like three. <laughs> you know, so would you yeah. would you say um China run Steam and um Origin at the same time is because it's like a resource hog or something like that? Well, it's just they're competing platforms and okay. I and I bet you that it's no different than uh trying to all right, if you wanna if you wanna play and use your PlayStation controller. You can, but you have to download this mod, and it is it, which is just stupid. Whereas if the Xbox controller is with the USB on it, it just plugs right in and plays. Takes for it Steam? Two seconds. Orange. Well, oh, yeah, for Steam, you can go to Steam and use the big picture app and uh it the Xbox joystick and PlayStation joystick work. Oh, but okay. they prefer you use the Steam joystick. So oh. the Steam stick has better uh I guess reaction time. So that's a better that's that's what they want. They're doing things on purpose to push you into their ecosystem, which, again, the PC community does not tell you about. You know, So until you get it, then you have to. And that's why if you look at a gaming, somebody who has a gaming PC, look, just go to a YouTube video. Look at the bottom of their monitor, Porter Rock. You'll see they have all these windows open. But that's because in order to get their software to run correctly, they have to have certain things talking to certain things. So they're, again, they're not going to tell you that. But mm. it's, it's a pain. With that said, I'm getting used to it now, and um, I'm starting to enjoy it a lot more. Because you just—they're right. You just go, you click, you download your game, and and it's ready. I mean, it's ready so fast you can just start playing. There's no update this; it just updates and you go. So. So that's pretty cool. Okay. Have you played games like in 60 frames or higher? Yeah. That um you would yeah. normally <clears throat> that you would normally have played in 30. And do you yeah. see the difference and feel the difference? Like like yeah. are, you at, are you are you are you getting to the point where you're like you can't go back? Uh, it's an immediate difference. Uh that that I will say. So all that stuff that and all that stuff that when the when they say there's a huge difference at 60 versus 30, they're not lying about that. I played Gears at 60 at over 60 and at 1080p ultra setting. So it the uh, the graphics look better than on than at 4K. And then 4K now feels sluggish or 4K 30 feels sluggish on Gears. It would be like I'm in molasses. I mean, I was going like 80 frames a second. So and it's just that's where it had me at and the PC with it wasn't yielding out a whole bunch of stuff. The GPU wasn't according to the load time uh, mm -hmm. on what was on it. But yeah, it was a, it's a you you feel the difference immediately. It's like four is a four. It's they have a 1080p 60 mode on Xbox X, but it's like mid settings or something like that. And it looks like compared to ultra settings, it looks like shit, you know, but it's still running at 60. So they have a 4K 30 mode, but then that's like driving in molasses. Mm. <laughs> so it's just, it's just, yeah, there was a difference. There was a yeah. Difference. Hey, hey, Craig, Craig is a PC snob now, nah, man. Once he, once he goes to PC, he's an elitist. <laughs> he's, the, he's the Messiah of PC now. Yeah, he, he can't go back to uh, us. Uh, us console plebs ain't worthy. <laughs> no, it's just that 30 frames. It's, well, just imagine cutting Gran Turismo's time. Frames for frames per second time in half. Yeah. It would be horrible. You know, yeah. it's just not meant to be that way. So, uh, but it's 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 just a different way to game. Um, it it it's a higher. It's to get into the club. I guess it's a higher membership, but it does have something. You can do some cool stuff. I've got Eve online uh, right now. The free part of it, ready to go. Like as soon as we get done podcasting here, I'm going to start on that. I'm going to start on the superior console version of Resident Evil 
uh, shortly after I play about an hour of E, you know, <laughs> so um, just uh, so that's that's my night in a nutshell. And I have to finish watching The Punisher. So oh, that's I got plans. <laughs> I, yeah, I haven't even started that yet. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's hard. Robert McCloud said it's hard to go back. It's not. It's just that gears now feel slow. It still looks great. But now I understand what they're saying. You can play in high settings and ultra settings and you have better looking graphics. They, it is a difference. So it just it just is until you see it's like the Matrix I can tell you all about it. But you have to see it. <laughs> you know, yeah. and once you see it, you it's an immediate. Wow. The cutscenes on gears just look clean. I literally had to step back from the screen. And look at it like Jesus is that looks. It looks like that. Remember, I remember we watched E three, right? And they had that gear scene. How clean that looked. That that's that's off the PC. The consoles are never going to look like that. Never. I mean, I just never. You know, it's like telling like, oh, you're never going to walk again. It's terrible. You know, it's just uh, this. Uh, it's just uh, that's why I put I changed my uh, thing on Twitter. The PC is unfair. Cause it's very unfair what you can, what I'm doing on the on the settings with tessellation and and can take things down and add and make it make the game faster. I could probably get gears up to over 120 frames a second per second if I wanted to. So this All is right. crazy. And All right, very mindset. very well. So Craig Harris is now a PC snob. Oh, well, it's something else. It's That's different. it. And we're nothing but console plebs. I still play. So that was great. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get another Xbox because I can't play uh, Mass Effect the trilogy on on a friggin' game pad. I gotta use a mouse. Stupid. It's retarded. On PC. Correct. Unless you download some mentally some app that you know, and as soon as you download some type of new program, it pops up. This can this can change your PC. I'm like, well, I don't want to change anything. I got the world most powerful PC, right? Twelve thousand one dollar, you know, for this PC. You know, so um, it's it's a uh, no. I'm not going to change it. So I'll just you know, there, and there's enough games on Xbox where I can entertain myself, I guess. But yeah, you know, this your cloud stuff in Xbox. Some of it will download. Some of it won't download. It's just it's crazy. So. Mm -hmm. All right, shout out to Lionel B, man. Thank you for the super chat. Um, he says, shout out to Switch for being the mac and cheese of gaming. Switch manages to be on everyone's plate, but it's not filling by itself. Interesting point, man. We're gonna talk about that. Yeah, you because know, we, you know, that's um with the whole Metroid news and whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, I want to I want to shout out to the chat. Thank you for rocking out with us. Welcome to another episode of Sixty Frames No Lag. If my voice sounds a little bit different, I'm recovering from a cold. So it's, my voice is a little bit deeper than normal, um, but I try to keep it clear and concise for everybody, but um, we're going to knock it out, man. I'm glad to uh, be back with the crew. J-Dub, man, how's everything you doing? I know Craig Harris is talking shit now that he's PC Master Race. How, you know, how's my, how's my fellow console pleb doing? Uh, everything's good, man. Can't complain. Can't complain. Mm, shit, man. So you, you playing all that goodness on the Xbox One X and shit? Oh uh, no, nah, man! I, uh, <laughs> hey, I'm I'm playing uh, on the PlayStation the Resident Evil Two. Mm. Love that game. Brings back the the same old feelings uh, from the original. Um, I got my um, Kingdom Hearts PS4 theme Pro coming in tomorrow. Damn! So I'm you. looking forward to that. Um, and then I'm trying to get on. Uh, I got an Anthem group together. You know. Me and a couple other dudes, we're going to run. We tried to run on the X today, but it seems like the Xbox version is down. So, therefore, we're going to switch over to the greatness station that is PlayStation. Uh -huh. And that shit is up and running right now. How's so. it down? That's the world's most pow second most powerful console. Right, it, it is what it is, man. Oh. It, it just works. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, the thing is, it can't, it can't rely on Cody to be useful. <laughs> or, the or, or the cloud, or the, or the oh, power of the cloud. Oh shit! You know what I'm saying? Hey, hey. That, that, that leads into another point, Porter Rock, that we talked about. We've been talking about uh, on Twitter with with this whole streaming future. Yeah. And now you know all your games yeah. are streaming, and now you can't even get in. You know that's, that's a good point because um like the uh, servers down, but this is just one game, and it's just a beta. 
What if the servers are down for like a streaming service? That means you can't do nothing. Nothing. Like yeah. there's no gaming at all. Like there's no options for alternate gaming. At least with a dedicated console, you could be like, all right, let me go play some single player games, backlogs and stuff like that. Or local multiplayer. Let me call my boy over. You know, there's still gaming. There's still ways to do gaming. Streaming is all or nothing. That's why I said I will never choose a streaming device as a main platform. And there's, yep. there's no way I could rely on streaming as a main platform. Like that, that's just that's just not that that's just not me. I can't not as a main platform. I gotta have alternate options to play games and stuff. Yeah. That makes you sense. Know? I wouldn't do that either. Um, this just that. Um, I mean, shout out. Well, I mean, there was another uh, clickbait video about Google possibly making a local console, and uh, and I've been I was told today when I went up to Best Buy. Uh, shout out to the Black Order that's at Best Buy. But uh, yeah, I was told, yeah, they're gunning for 1080p 60 at high settings on, on their games. Whatever games you get, this is 1080p 60 high settings. And it just set and go. But it will be streaming. I'm like, well, if they get into it, it's over. You know, this is Katie Bar the door. Those guys don't, those guys are here, you know, yeah. to put people out. So, uh, but I, if they can sell it at 250, then uh, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna, or 199. It is a sale. It is a sale like gangbusters. Yeah. Right <clears throat> you know, um, because I was I was having a discussion on Twitter about the whole um, you know, game streaming, next cloud. Um, it, it was really because of the Verizon. And yeah, you know, you know that Verizon image, and of course yeah. uh, Xbox fanboys jumped all over cause the image of God of War, and now they're saying that all PlayStation games will be on Verizon streaming. And I I, I understood like the people who were doing it to clown and talk shit and come side, I understood those. But there was a few people that actually think it's real. Now, those are the guys I don't understand. Like, the, the trolls I get, they're just yeah. talking shit and antagonizing. You know, it's trolling. You know, it yeah. is what it is. It's talking shit. But the guys who are actually, like, serious about it, I'm looking at them like, yo, how the fuck? Like, how could you even think Sony's going to do that when they have their own streaming service? They would just leave it on theirs and build theirs up. And exactly. be like, but they'd be like, oh, you know, but Verizon has all subscribers. I'm like, yeah, but you don't understand. Verizon would also get third party support, which means anybody who's playing Verizon, they're playing the third party games there as well. So why would Sony help Verizon gain subscribers for both third party games as well? Like I was going on this whole list, right? Mm -hmm. And then they were like, oh, it doesn't matter because, you know, Verizon will have the network. And they'll be able to reach the casuals that play on phone that normally, you know, that, you know, you, that normally don't get consoles. I'm like, it doesn't work that way. Right. So let me see. Mm -hmm. it's, so <clears throat> right there on the spot, I recorded um, my wife and my daughter because they were playing. They were playing online together on the phone. Mm -hmm. Just just so happens while I was having this conversation on Twitter. And let me play that conversation. Let me see if you guys can hear it. Let me see. Let me see if this, you guys can hear it. Hey, babe, I'm not you that? recording y'all right now. I'm not recording your faces, but they hear your voices. I'm gonna ask you a question. All right? Have you ever heard of Google streaming? No. Have you ever heard of Google game streaming? No. Because of you. No. Have you ever heard of Verizon game streaming on your phone? No. Are you interested? So you know the games I play, right? Like God of War. Spider-Man, Call of Duty, right? If these games were streamed to your phone, would you play them? No. No. All right, so it's not the fact that they're not on the phone is the reason why you don't play these games. Meaning, meaning the reason why you're not playing them isn't because they're not accessible to your phone. No, I'm not interested. I'm not interested. No, I'm not interested in games. So it doesn't matter. So so if, if Verizon came out and said, or Sprint, and said, hey, you can play God of War on your phone right now for $10 a month. I wouldn't play that. Why not? I wouldn't play Because I'm not interested in those games. What are you interested in? But you play phone games, right? Yeah. What do you play on your phone? I play like Bejeweled or Candy Crush or... Thanks. Okay. So let's say if you really wanted to play God of War, would you let the fact that it's not on the phone stop you from playing God of War? Let's say if you're like, damn. Okay. Well, I was you so proud of my daughter at that moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Is you really want to? Yeah, y'all can play PlayStation 4 on Xbox. I would play it on there if I really wanted to play it. So it isn't the fact that it's on a PlayStation that's preventing you from playing these games. It's the fact that you're not just really interested in it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Exactly. That's, yeah. that's, that's, hey, that's what we've been saying forever, for a long time. Yeah. My daughter, I'm proud of her. She says, if I really want to play it, I'm going to find a way to play it. You know, exactly. she would she wouldn't let a phone. And this is the thing. You got console gamers trying to describe phone gamers on what they want to play. Mm-hmm. My wife is the target audience Microsoft is going after. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? These dudes, all the console gamers can't think for my wife. She is, yo, she's like level 400 in these games. She hey. plays these games a lot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? She's on her phone all the time playing these games. She is that mobile market. She's mm-hmm. the one that makes the Candy Crushes and all these other games successful with billion dollar franchises. You know? Yeah. She has no interest in God of War. And it's not because it's not on the phone. It's because she doesn't like that game. That's not the type of game she goes after on the phone. And the majority of phone gamers are like that. This is not the type of games they want to play. You know, yeah. phone gamers. They know about PlayStation. They know about Halo. They're not, you know, some of these dudes is confusing because on one hand, they 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 brag about gaming being bigger than movies, but then on the other hand, they act like gaming is niche. Phone gamers know about Halo. They know about Madden. They know about Call of Duty. They see it every day. They probably buy the consoles for their kids. They probably bought them as Christmas gifts. They they know that it exists. They know what games are on consoles. And these consoles are only $199. They're actually cheaper than phones themselves. So yeah. they know. And they're not even hard to plug in. You just plug it in through your HDMI port. They know. It's not hard to get into console gaming. It's it's a very simple, you know, we all it, it, these same dudes say, Well, I don't do PC because you know I need something that's plug and play. So they know it's easy. Yeah. They're just not interested. A lot of the phone gamers don't, a lot of them play the phones at home. So it's not even the mobile part. So the, even the mobile part's not the excuse. A lot of them play phone games like my wife. She was playing it on the couch at home. So it isn't the mobile or it's on a phone or they don't like devices. No, it's none of that. It, it isn't the, it isn't the game. The access, yeah, it isn't. Yeah. The, the reason they're not playing it isn't because of access. It yeah. isn't because of price. It isn't because of any any of that. It's because they are not interested in those games. They have their games that they want to play on and how they want to play on. Uh, and if they wanted to play the big games, right, like like your family said, they'll jump on the PlayStation or the Xbox and or the, the Switch and do that. Yeah. And that. And I think this is where a lot of people in the Xbox community lost the plot. People. You play these devices for the games. The games is what's making you want to play. And I think because Microsoft has been doing such a bad job with games, at least from the Microsoft standpoint, because sure, you still got third party. You still got big third party. You got Resident Evil, Anthem, you know, Call of Duty, Madden. You still got all that, right? But all those games don't particularly identify a console. You know, it doesn't help you identify. Anybody can play those games. It's community pussy, like I call it. You know what I'm saying? So... But these guys got, you know, neglected with quality titles that define a console that they no longer believe. That's what people buy consoles for, which is crazy. You are a gamer. Game is what defines you. You're not a counselor. You can say you're a console gamer if you want to be specific, but you're still a gamer. At the end of the day, it's the games. Games is what's going to attract you to devices. You know what I'm saying? That's what it is. None of us are really phone gamers, but I guarantee if Sony started making big blanking exclusives for phones, we would f- be playing on phones because that's where the game is at. You understand what I'm saying? Well, and that, I, that, that's what it all comes down to. It's the games. And these phone well, gamers just not interested the games that consoles and PC are providing. They want to play these little cheap, quick, grass grab in games. They don't want the big AAA multi-budget Big blockbuster exclusives. They're not interested in that. They're interested in these little cheap free knockoffs. Yeah. Well, I just think people got to really understand that the Xbox community, they're going to just go with whatever Xbox does because they do not want Xbox to walk out on CNBC or Fox Business or pick your business network and say, we're shutting down shop. So whatever they say, meaning Xbox, they're they're gonna run with that. So if they think that 
uh, streaming games, which I personally believe is going to work. I mean, I just it's it's a cheap way for people to get into the market. And I I was at uh, a Best Buy in 2014 when a woman walked in. And she didn't know whether to buy an Xbox One or a PlayStation 4. And she asked the guy what was the difference. And the guy said, well, they both play movies and they both play games. And she said, well, then I'll just get the one that's $100 cheaper. That's what they're going to do with the streaming devices. Oh, I can do the same things at, at $199 or $249. And it's still going to give me access to play the same type of games and maybe have an online mode. You're right about the internet but that will be on the box i guarantee I'm to you it will say must have internet to to play on this device so if you've got um you know people like verizon looking i'm just gonna say looking into it you know like you all were mentioning you've got google possibly jumping in you got microsoft going all in so they're they're and now you're there's talk of what of amazon creating a streaming box it's just talk i'm not saying that they're going to do it so um, that's just that it'll work. It's just I'm not here to say it's, it's not going to be a fail safe or it's not going to it may not be perfect. But like J Dub just said, the Anthem beta it's down. And a uh, shout out to uh, Twitter. The, the the there's damage control going right now for I guess Anthem down on Xbox. I mean people are just going crazy, you know. <laughs> so uh, but yeah, I just I think we really got to stop underestimating that they don't. They just like Xbox, okay? It doesn't matter if Xbox comes out with a suitcase. They're going to defend it. They're going to hype it. And uh, that's just who they <laughs> are. And um, because they do that. And again, it's been proven by even this past week where the young engineer, the gaming engineer, left Naughty Dog and went to the initiative. They they went, they celebrated. They jumping up and down. You know, so that proves they want to play the same games. They just don't want to have to buy a PlayStation. You know, and so that's and that's just the, the, here, here's the problem, Craig. Right, when it comes to the streaming stuff, guys are only accepting it is because Phil Spencer is throwing it out there uh, <laughs> a lot. They think that this streaming method and this streaming stuff is going to save Xbox. They think that it's going to sure. put it one up over everybody else. Facts. And, and and at the end of the day, I mean, the Switch has proven this generation that it's about the games. If you if you have the games, people will buy your your hardware. If you mm -hmm. don't have the games, then you're going to be in second, third place, and it is what it is. But yeah. Three. you know, again, uh, like what Puerto Rock was saying in the beginning, streaming is just a access. It's just another way to access your games. It doesn't create anything new. It just gives you access to that. Um, yeah. I don't know of anyone who will forego their main console to play streaming only. And I get it. Maybe there's a, a, a niche, a small niche target. Again, a lot of people are saying that it's a much bigger target than I think it is. But I just honestly don't think it is. Uh, just like Puerto Rock's family said, look, you know, we play our games on our iPhones or our iPads. That's what we do. We don't want to go to the consoles or we don't want to go to the PC or we don't want to go to all of this other stuff. Like, let us be us. And I think the industry is quick to they want to go and grab all of that extra money and revenue from from the additional content from the mobile platform. So they can't do it directly. So they want to lump the gamers together, the PC, they want to lump, lump the console and then the mobile market and everybody else under one umbrella. But it doesn't work that way. Uh, it just doesn't work that way. Uh, there's a reason why Nintendo has been in the industry for 35 years and they've been successful, right? They stick to, you know, up and down. All these companies have come and gone, but they've kind of stayed the same. They give you the hardware. They give you the great games and the IPs you love and everything else has come and gone. We've seen hardware that was weaker than Nintendo's. We've seen some that was powerful. We've seen some that had far more advanced technology and some that was weaker. It didn't matter, uh, right? Nintendo has outlasted them and Sony will outlast them if they just continue down the, you know, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have an option out there. Yes, you should have the option. But if people, you know, right now people are banking 100% on this stream and they're putting too much leverage on that and not enough on the games and in the hardware itself for the traditional because i'm a traditional guy right i want a traditional console sure fine you know we got ps ps uh ps uh now right 
if mm-hmm. that was really for me, if I really wanted that, I could have been playing that for years, years, and years. I could have been having that. But it's not really what where I want to play or how I want to play. Therefore, I forego it. Mm-hmm. Well, so that, about, that's, I'm just, that's just my opinion. What about PSVR? See, people said the same thing about PSVR. Yeah. Uh, that, that VR wouldn't work. VR is too cumbersome. It's too but heavy. Here's the, but here's the thing. I will say this. The, the difference between VR and PS now is PSVR is unique. You got exclusives. Yes. You got unique yes. content. You got, you got like, exactly. for example, how how is in your opinion, Greg? Um, for you, for you personally, Craig, how yeah. would Verizon entice you to play on their service and not play on PlayStation? Well, again, they Verizon probably wouldn't. Google or Google. Let's say Google. Right, Google has not. Well, Google is synonymous with quality. We okay, have, but no, I, I so it worked. Let's say their streaming okay. service works. Okay. okay? So what would entice me right right now? It would be the price point, one ninety nine. And okay. they say, hey, don't worry about four K. They okay. say the heck with four K. No, I'm asking if you don't. I'm not, I'm not generalizing. I want your opinion. This is you now. You as crazy. Yeah, okay? well, I'm telling you the price. So point. you 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 you're gonna play Mad. You're gonna Anthem, but you don't get God of War. You don't get Spider Man. Well, well, again, I, I agree. No, with I'm you. asking you. I'm why, asking you why, why, why would why would Google that's need that's to do? To entice you to leave their, to leave another platform's ecosystem. Well, okay. so you can I, that. I personally would not leave an ecosystem as long as it's delivery. And, 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 and he is, and this is the problem. This is this is the problem I have. No, everyone who's have saying, problem. everyone who's saying streaming is going to work, whatever, whatever, are the same people that wouldn't choose streaming as their number one option. That's the that's the part. No, I have yet to I meet would. a person that yeah. is advocating for streaming. And they're going to make the decision that this is the way they're going to play the games from now on. Well, I, I have would, not. Everyone who's I, uh, what I'm saying is everyone who's advocating for streaming, uh-huh. they're not choosing streaming as their primary way of playing games, and that doesn't make sense. Well, again, it is. It's again, you're you're looking at it. I understand that you're looking at, it, but you got to understand somebody is going to walk into a store and say, "Man, the new Xbox is whatever, five hundred bucks." The new PlayStation is five hundred bucks. Oh, this lets me do the exact same thing. But it doesn't. Ninety nine. It doesn't unless 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 PlayStation unless PlayStation does PS now that way. It, well, again, it doesn't. Right, so minus PlayStation you mi- exclusive game. Yeah, you you okay. might you that audience might be. I will say this: anyone who thinks like that, ninety percent, the majority might be like the Madden. Call of Duty only gamer. I could see them, right? There's only one problem though. Who the fuck you're gonna play with when all your friends are on uh, Xbox or PlayStation? Well, again, that, that's that, another factor. Okay, now, well, we're well. I'm looking at it like they have to get into the door. Like Eric B and Rakim said, I came through the door. I said it before. They, you gotta allow them to try to build up an ecosystem. Like that's why I like using the PSVR because. People said the same thing about VR overall. It, I mean, it didn't matter if it was Oculus. They said it was crazy. Yeah. They said the thing about Vive. Hey, look, y'all are crazy. Nobody wants that thing on their face. But those yeah. are but those are unique gaming things. Stream, yeah. Google, 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 no, no, but hold up. Google streaming is not unique. What is it going to do unique other than it's a cheaper way to play games, to which a console gets cheaper over time either? It, it you know what I'm saying? It's a cheaper way to play the game. What? That's it. If, if the console works, it's a cheaper way to play the game. If, 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 again, if you're going to allow me to play major titles at one ninety nine, at, at you know, at, at a you know, then there's they're going to get sales. Now, will it be the primary device? Well, maybe not, but maybe it takes off on college campuses. I know Google is really targeting college campuses with their device because that's a two hundred dollar device they can. Put some kids within their dorm room. They had they have some games to play, you know. Whether it's you know, and so that's kind of where they're going with it. Now it may fail because Glass Google Glass failed, but they spent billions of dollars researching and developing it, and they're gonna. And this thing works. I mean, at the at CES, AMD showed you they showed the Google device working at 1080p 60 at high settings, no issues. Now, maybe they ginned it up, but as so far, the early reports is that that thing works. Now they got to get a good price for it. And now is it going to be the primary device for the hardcore? More likely not. 
But don't underestimate Susie running in there with snot nosed Johnny. And instead of and instead of Susie paying 500, Johnny snot nosed Johnny's gonna, gonna play at 199. That's what this happened with the PS4 and Xbox. All right. So now, so let me ask you. So I'm gonna bring you up some a couple of barriers, right? And see yeah. how streaming. Number one, barrier number one. Okay, 100 percent relying on the internet. There is right. no other option. That's barrier right. number one. Barrier number two. You will not digitally own anything Correct. because you're not downloading. I'm not even talking about physical. Physical is yeah. out the window, too. That's You already pretty much dismissed it. But let's say if a person is willing to dismiss physical, you don't own anything digitally either. So there's nothing digital about this also. You don't own nothing digital, right? Yes, it's doing it over the Internet, but you don't physically. You have not bought a license to a digital game that you've downloaded and you have on a hard drive. So there's that barrier. Number three, if you are already a gamer, and we're not talking about new gamers, we're talking about established gamers, your ecosystem will not carry over. That means you're starting over from scratch. All those digital games and physical games you bought on Xbox One, PC, or PlayStation, mm -hmm. they do not apply. So well, you I got nothing. I'm suffering on that now. You got nothing. What happened? I'm suffering on that now with leaving the xbox and going to pc the game a lot of the games did not carry over yeah even though but now but not but not everything you're building on pc won't go to the streaming price so you'll be doing that all over again yeah. you see what i'm saying so oh. you see a lot of the so you see a lot of the issues and barriers you can't take your friends with you yep so you don't have that issue so so the friends you've been playing madden for a decade or whatever they're not there if they don't co-sign this so you'll you'll have to Play on a new ecosystem with new friends, 100% relying on the internet, and you don't own anything. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? And I think those, and I think those are the barriers people people are gonna have issues with. They're gonna be like, "Oh shit, you compare things," and they'll be like, "Wait a minute, so you don't download the game? So where's the game at? Oh, the company still owns it." A lot of people are gonna have an issue with that. They're gonna be like, "What? Well, but, but, like, but I don't know. have anything." Well, let me ask you about Netflix, Hulu, and Amazon Stream. Yeah, but a lot of people don't really buy movies. Most people rented them and brought them back. That's In fact, Netflix Netflix started as a disc service that instead of you walk to the right, store, I'm a I'm like, it in the mail. No, it, 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 start, it, start, it started as a... That's not what I was going to say. Have, have Netflix, Hulu, and Amazon not laid down the foundation of no ownership and you just stream? No, because movies was always been like that. Blockbuster, okay. you didn't own the movies. You went to the well, store. I understand that, but right now, but that's no. but that's what I'm trying to explain to you. We were already accustomed to not owning movies. We we before digital, before the internet, before uh -huh. Blockbuster, we went to the mom and pop store, got a VHS cassette, yeah, paid two dollars, took it home, saw your movie, and you walked it right back. You did not own the movie. We were already accustomed. Majority of the people were already accustomed to renting movies because, in reality, most people they didn't want to pay twenty dollars for something you were only going to watch once. That's because that's what a movie was. You watched it once. That's it. That's I understand it. That, but did, but still, do more. How many people have uh, Netflix? They don't have ownership. But, but, but oh my God, Craig, listen to what I'm saying. We oh, were, oh uh, no, but 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 you're not understanding because you're using the same answer again. I'm explaining to your answer the reason why Netflix became so accessible because it's the digital version of going to Blockbuster. That's all it is. We we you just, you just, you just we, it's the, I understand that, but games was different. A lot of us buy games because it's like a sixty hour experience or forty hour experience. You understand? Well, again, but if they have laid, if they have can, if they feel they've conditioned the ground to, to to get this to work, then we just have to wait and see if it's going to work. I well, don't think well, yet VR would be successful. No, but what I'm saying is there was no conditioned ground. We were movies was already like that day one. Movies was always a medium where you didn't really buy it; you borrowed it. Well, That's movie. movies was always like that. Sure, there are a few yeah. people that bought movies. There's a lot of people that buy movies, but primarily, movies was really something you borrowed, not bought, because you only watched it for two hours. No one wanted to pay twenty dollars for a movie. That's why rentals became so huge. That's why it went from mom and pop to blockbuster, 
and now went pretty much digitally. Because really, when you think of streaming, it's just like renting a movie in reality. You don't own it, but you don't really want to own it because you don't want to pay that much money for something you watch once and then you put on a shelf and it collects dust forever. You really don't want to do that. But if they feel that the conditions on the ground are are ready for this, they're they're gonna push it out there. Now they may wait, it may be another year before they get there. But uh we'll, we'll have to wait and see. I, I just don't think it's gonna be, I just don't think it's gonna be as huge as a lot of people think. And I think well, the majority I don't of people think start that way. I truly don't believe it'll start that way. But 149, 199, if those are the you know, if that's the MSRP, people are gonna buy it. Now they may hate it. You're right. I mean, they may get it home and the internet go out. They may hate it and then say, "Why well, had a bad experience because the internet kept going out." That's so, going to happen a lot. I'm telling yeah, you, I, I don't that's going to happen a lot. Here, here's, that's, here's, here's, that's the barrier. Look, look, look at J Dub. J Dub, yeah. your internet went out for like two days. Yeah. So yeah. people like J Dub, they're going to go on the thing. Oh, my stuff is down. I can't play no games. I this agree. is the worst mistake I ever did in my life <laughs> buying game streaming. I don't this thing. I it's going to get. It's going to get. I bet J Dub gets one just to try it out. Yeah. He may yeah. hate it. No, game, game streaming is going to get a lot of negative press because it's 100% reliant on the internet. Yeah, it's a gamble. I'm not here to say it's not a gamble. But again, I mean, how many people were on the internet? And you, like, what do they say? The kid, these kids say you can pull the receipts. They said Switch was going to bomb. They said PlayStation VR was not going to work. Both those sets of people were wrong. So these, again, these industries know a hell of a lot more than we do. I have to, I'll have defer to them for knowing their own market. They may bomb. I'm not here to say that it's going to work. I agree it's going to start off slow. But if you have, if they can get it to work, then it's, it's especially with Google, the Microsoft device is dead if Google stuff works, if it works. So, I mean, I just think it's going to take more than simply, hey, go Google because it works. They're going to be like, Listen, no, you, you're going to have why, why should I get you instead of a PlayStation? Because we work. Yeah, well, yeah, so yeah. PlayStation. well, we're, we're cheaper than PlayStation, but PlayStation has big games and, and yeah, well, a console, think. and it's a device I have, you know, because simply, I, I understand the cheap part, mm -hmm. but the thing is, the, the, the factor to become cheaper means. You don't have a dedicated device. You can't own content. And you, you know, there's sacrifices to be cheaper. You know what I'm saying? It's not like you're getting the same thing for a cheaper price. No, you're getting a lot less stuff. There's a lot of stuff you're gonna, there's a lot of stuff you're gonna have to accept. Yeah. And there's a lot of things you just won't own no more to get to that cheaper price. You know what I'm saying? Right. And you're that's right. where people are gonna be like, okay, you're cheaper. But you don't do this, you don't do that, you don't have this, I can't buy that, I can't use a used game, I can't game share with my friends. There's a right. lot of, you know, you don't have an ecosystem, do you have trophies, do you have this? There's a lot of things that people are going to ask that, okay, you're cheaper, but are you better at a cheaper price? Or are you at least the same at a cheaper I price? Because that's the key. I, I'm not here to say it's, it's You so can't just be cheaper... And the thing is just cheap. Like, yeah, no shit. Cheap yeah. shit is cheap. Yeah, we all get that. You know, it's kind of like the 199 PS4. Yeah, it's cheap, but it's a quality console. I agree. For 199. Yeah, we'll, Sony we'll, backs up the yeah. quality. I agree. Yeah. You know, whether it be, uh, you know, a, a speaker or something like that, some, you know, a Walkman, a disc, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, they're synonymous with the quality of their product. Google at least has that going for them. Now, they, you're right. They have to prove it. They have to show the technology working ongoing. I mean, that's that's the main thing. We know they're expanding Google, Google Fiber. Yeah, Google's going to need games. Going. That's the key. They yeah, need games. And, and, and I ain't talking Madden. They need exclusives. They need big numbers exclusives because that's what's going to attract Madden. people. Okay, if they can get a Madden, which was as much as people may not may hate on Madden, that was one of the top. 10, 15 games sold this year. If they can get a Madden or something like that, then yeah, you've got some, you know, you may have a little, it may be Rumble, Young Man Rumble. But with this, I mean, I have to wait and see. I don't think Madden is going to help Google, even at a 149 MSRP. Because all yeah. the Madden gamers, they play with their friends and they play on the ecosystem. They're, they're locked in. Yeah, I agree. Like, like, so, <laughs> like, yeah, so I don't see that. If, if, if Google's relying on Madden, then they already failed. Yeah, but again, there the, again, the talk was that not only would there be a streaming device, 
And it's just a rumor. It was going to be a physical local device as well, like a device like a PlayStation or a Xbox or something like that. So if that's true and they do a local device, it's it's going to be tough because they do have the money to go in and sit down with these developers and say, here's a check. And yeah. you know it's going to cash. Yeah, so so did Microsoft and how that turned out for them. I agree. Yeah. Money, yeah. like I said, money, money ain't the key. It's it's vision. You're right. You're it's right. Talent. You know, I think it, they it, start it, out with it's multiple flat games yeah. and then they let's see where their ecosystem takes them. Now they may put benchmarks in. I mean, pretty sure everybody understands that Nintendo Switch did had very little to no third party supported launch. I mean, and I'm sure they had to have benchmarks hit before the third party came in. Google may set something like that up. And those developers have every right to say, look, once you get to whatever, 10 million, call us back. You know, you know, some are 8 million, call us yeah, back. For those who have third party, it won't even reach that high. Well, that's, that's my that's point. Funny. They have every right to say that. But again, we can go back and see that there were people saying that the switch was going to bomb. Because they had no third party support, it was a mistake. Here, here, here's the here's the problem, right? We're we're comparing two different things, all right? True. St streaming is just a method of how you play the game, or or, or how you. It's just a substitute. That's all it is. It's an yeah. alternative. The it's not even is, something really unique. It's just it's, like you exactly. Said. But that's that's what I'm saying, right? We all have Playstations. We all have Switches. We all have Xboxes. Mm -hmm. When they bring another streaming platform like Google Project uh, Stream, Xbox, yeah. X Cloud, um, Amazon, whatever they, you know, whatever the different competitors bring or whatever, we're gonna have five, six different streaming platforms. What is going to pull me away from my PlayStation or my Xbox or my Nintendo to go and sign up for those systems? I mean, for those alternatives and spend my money on that ecosystem. What's going to do that? Well, you, I mean, you, you, I, I understand you know, you're saying right. you, well, PlayStation is your main ecosystem, right? Yeah. All right. Why did you buy an Xbox X? Uh, for their games that they have that were known. Okay. The All right. So what if Google does the exact same thing? Yeah, that, that's what it, that, that's that, what we're that, saying. That's, that's exactly that's what it needs. Exactly, it's you know, the games. You're gonna <laughs> have to have I the games. That. That's, over, that's, right? that's 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 the key. That. You know, that's the key. You but got to have we're the hard you got to have exclusives. We're, but Google we know needs exclusives. Hardcore. What about Jenny with Snot Nose Johnny? Well, okay. yeah. But what if not five hundred dollars to I'll, spend on a brand new console and there's something sitting there that allows Snot Nose Johnny to quit tugging on her shorts and, and it's at 149 199 She's gonna buy it. Okay, no. that's I mean that's why I mean again, guys. We I can just if you don't believe I, me, go back to 2013, 14. This station. I agree with you. Smoked the Xbox. I so agree with you. Day. I agree with you that, but something happened, and I call it the iPhone effect, which is right. content that's digital. People want it to be carried over. Okay. All right. So Snap No Donnie probably has an Xbox One already or a PS4. And Snap knows Johnny's mom probably bought all these games and all this content. So now they want all this stuff to carry over. Kind of like their iPhone, kind of like their Samsung. You know, we live in an age now where people expect to carry over their stuff from platform to platform. That's why a lot of people, right now, the number one requested feature for PlayStation 5 is backwards compatibility. As much as we talk shit, it is the number one feature, and PS5 better have it. If it doesn't have BC, it will fail. You know, the games won't save it. You know why? Because people's mentality is, I spend a thousand dollars on PlayStation 4, and you're gonna fuck me over, and I can't, it's just, it's useless. They won't invest in a device that you can't invest in. You understand what I'm saying? That's just the world we live in now. We live in that world. 2013, we didn't really live in that world. It was just starting. Now in 2019, that's the world we live in. We have to carry over. PlayStation games has to carry over to PS5. It's not an option. What it's not an option for Sony. Same so, to Xbox One, but it's not okay. knows Johnny, unless he hasn't gamed before, uh -huh. he wants his shit to carry over. It's not knows Johnny. If he's an Xbox One gamer, he's going to be an Xbox kind of comic gamer because that's where all the games are at. That's where all his stuff is at. They're well, going to carry over. The conditions, so you agree the conditions on the ground change because didn't PS3, which I didn't own, didn't PS3 have backwards compatibility? 
Yeah, it did. Okay, so they and so they did not. It didn't get used a whole lot. I agree with you. the The conditions have changed. The conditions have changed. So they're gonna. They have to change with the. Even if it's going to be a very little use function or feature, they should offer the option. I do agree with that. But my point is that the conditions change. And you know, what if Google were to come out and say we have Fortnite, we have I don't know Rocket League. And right now, both all, those games I just named right there are crossplay. I mean, they're in they're in a beta with Sony, but they're crossplay. And they say, yeah, you can come over here and play it too. Where is it? Yeah, sell. but here's his Fortnite. Fortnite's on phones, and nobody left PlayStation. Yeah, I agree with that. It's, yeah, you know what I'm but, saying. But I, 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 just, I just don't see the streaming play. I just don't see the streaming platform unless the streaming platforms need games. That's just the bottom line. They I need exclusives. If they if Google just comes in thinking, oh, you know, I'll, you just have to buy a one ninety nine dongle and that's enough, people are gonna be like, yeah, you're one ninety nine, but what do you do? Like, what do you got? What's on the table? I don't disagree. Oh, I we got Madden. Agree. Well, I got Madden already, and I play with my yeah. friends. Well, I say give it a year. Once yeah. it comes out, give it one year, and that's what I said about the Switch. I mean, people can go back and listen. I said, look, give them one year. Let them get the baby out the barn. And a year later, that thing was rolling. It's been rolling since it's come out. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm saying the same thing with streaming. Let's give it. I mean, it's not even out yet. Can't go buy it. It's just you know. Yeah, but other platforms have streamings, and it fell. Like Gamefly, Gamefly just shut theirs down. Yeah, Yeah. and I'm saying let's see where it ends up because there, there's, there's, there's enough for it, and there's enough legitimately. Like you brought it up, Porter Rock. There's questions that have to be answered. That's why I said this new tech. Give it like six but, months. But let me ask you this though: We already have streaming platforms. We have PS Now right now. So why yeah. hasn't PS Now taken off? Um, I don't know. We had it for we had it for three years. And and PS Now has a bunch of games. That yeah. Works. So, oh yeah, yeah, they do. But, but why hasn't that taken off then? And well, it, it works. Cool. And it works. And it has a brand name back behind it, PlayStation. So well, why hasn't so cool. why hasn't that taken off? I maybe it has. What is their buy rate? To the, no, it's to not. Yeah, it hasn't taken all that all. I mean, I don't know. I'm not saying it is that it, it, it has. I'm just saying I don't know. I can't. Okay, so why it. don't you know? So if you don't know, then chances are it hasn't taken off. If you can't, if well, you're not I mean, even sure. Because if you're taking off, you would know. Well, I mean, I know there's more money, so I don't know if that means they see something. I don't know. But I'm but I'm saying PS Now has been around for what two years at least. Okay, but if it's if it's in the toilet and failing, they wouldn't have the service. They just yeah, say, but I'm not I'm not saying that it's failing. But what I'm saying is, it's a it's, it it's, not, it it's nothing. It's it's, yeah, it's, it's just it there. Like it's just we, there. Okay. If, well, if well, anything, not, not we bad. talk about PS. If anything, we talk about PS Now only because the word PlayStation associated, not really because of the service itself. When you think about it, right? I if, if the if this PS Now service was called. Um, fucking um, sprint now we uh-huh. wouldn't care about it at I all. Agree. Yeah, I agree. so so what happened? So why isn't PS now taking off then? I well, my understanding. <laughs> well, again, people didn't buy. Why? Like, why did wait? Eight. Hold up, GameFly. You could play that. Well, you used to. You were able uh-huh. to play that on an Amazon, um, Fire TV. You didn't even need. You know, if you own the Amazon Fire TV or Roku box and other devices that most people own, you didn't even have to buy another device. You could have just downloaded the application. And then play games on those devices. How come nobody did that? I don't know. How come nobody even tried? Well, why did why why did three D TV fail? People mm-hmm. didn't buy that either. You know, so it's just. But it, what I'm saying you is, know. you you have this whole hype for streaming. We already have streaming services, and right. we have one right now that's been around for two years. And because the conditions on the ground have changed, and they they see something where they're investing. I mean, these are major corporations investing hundreds of millions of dollars into the technology. Now, it could fail. It could fail because Connect Bomb, uh, Google's Project Glass. Windows, Windows oh, Phone Bomb. Yeah. That, so it's not that everything is going to work. But I'm, I've always said I'm willing to give it at least a year after it comes out. Now, if it's a year and, it, and it's just they, it's, they got them on sale for $49.99 at the local dollar store. Like some, you know, then that's that's one thing. But I personally think they're going to be successful. You know what I think? You know why I think this industry is doing this, in my opinion. And we'll, we'll move on because we've on this long talking off. But I think it's because everybody feels games, movies, and music is exactly mm-hmm. games, movie, music, phones is exactly the same. 
Yeah. Like, well, well movie know, streaming yeah. successful, music streaming successful. So what what makes gaming so different, right? And I'm and, and I've been saying this. Gaming, while it's huge, and many people say bigger than music and movies, is still a unique multimedia. It's just still unique multimedia entertainment because gaming is the only multimedia and is the only entertainment industry where you have very few devices, especially for the main platforms. You know, how long have we been running with just three consoles at any given time as the primary platforms for console gaming? Yeah. Yet every other media, you know, let's say like music, they don't live in a world where people only hear music on only three types of, you know, devices. There's hundreds of devices you can listen to music and even which includes phones there's 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 home theater systems there's ipods there's minis there's smart watch right? even a fucking watch now can listen to music music was never capped on just three devices but gaming has console gaming is usually especially over the last 15 years it's a microsoft box a sony box and a nintendo box and then you got pc that's pretty much it you know why what I'm saying? For this guy. Okay, why, why no, but I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep going. Right? right. Let me let me just keep to my point, right? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna show you another difference. The new iPhone came out, right? The XR, a thousand dollars, right? It's like twelve hundred dollars, right? Have you heard anybody who just bought it be like, damn, how come this thing don't got new content? How come I'm still playing the same shit I got on my last iPhone? Do you ever hear any phone get that complaint? I know no. none. The uh, phones are the only devices you can buy year over year with zero expectation of new apps. You're on the same Facebook app that I'm on, and I'm on an iPhone 7. Phones don't get that criticism. Imagine if you bought a thousand dollar console and you're still playing the same exact Gears of War 5 in every single way as the Xbox One X. No difference. Mm -hmm. We would be flipping the fuck out. You know what I'm saying? We will be expecting our game to be running at 8K 60 frames, and it's going to run in the same frame rate resolution graphics as the Xbox One X. We would fucking cause a riot. But a phone? Yeah. Same, 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 same Snapchat. Same exact Snapchat. Nothing different. You just bought a $1,000 phone to do the same thing. A phone from three years ago is doing the same exact thing. Phones do not get that criticism whatsoever. When you buy a brand new phone, none of them get flagged for unique games. None of them get flagged for exclusives, exclusive apps. Why is this app the same exact app as an iPhone 7 user? That's bullshit. I paid $1,000 for XR. I should be... None of them. Phones don't get that treatment. Phones is nothing. In fact, sometimes I wonder, why did you buy a phone every year? Like my daughter, she's one of those that buys a phone every year. She doesn't. She just does it because it's the new thing. But she has zero expectation from the phone. She doesn't expect Facebook to be better or to be different from my last phone. It's the same exact app. You see what I'm saying? Gaming's different. There's different levels of expectations for games. We hold gaming to a higher standard than movie enthusiasts hold the devices that plays movies. That phone enthusiasts hold phones. You know what I'm saying? Let the PlayStation 5 play the same exact games as PlayStation 4 with no difference and see how fast we will destroy the PlayStation 5 for just being another PlayStation 4 with a renamed box. We would totally rip that box apart. We would be like, where are the exclusives? Why are the games running the same exact way? What the fuck, Sony? You just, you just sold us a repackaged PS4. We would destroy that company. We will burn it to the ground if they ever did that to us. But Apple, hey, next year we're going to sell you another $1,000 phone and you're going to do the same exact shit on Facebook. And no one says nothing. They gladly do it. You see what I'm saying? And I think the industry needs to understand that. Gaming is different. There's a different standard to this medium that every other medium gets away with easily. Easily. Well, well you know, think about it. How many people like a new 2019 TV and you're still watching the same goddamn shows from the, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. there's, there's barely any difference. You yeah. see? Every other product gets away with that, but gaming won't. Gaming, we will destroy that fucking industry. They will, we will harass. We will fucking, like, we would, we would, stocks will go down. Motherfuckers will fucking boycott. Let gaming do something wrong. To even a smidgen, and we will destroy that platform in every single way. And that's why I think gaming is a little bit different compared to every other multimedia medium. 
We just hold it to a higher standard that everybody else gets away with. And I think these companies, they think they're going to be able to get away with stuff in gaming like they way can in phones and in movies and in music. Then I go, yeah, we do it in music and movies. Sure, it's going to work for gamings. And then when they try it in gamings, gamers are going to look at you like, nah, son, that ain't it. This ain't it. Well, that's, that's the million dollar question, but you can go back to what you all were saying before. Why did the Marvel Cinematic Universe work and the DC Cinematic Universe not work? Why, why, did the, why did the president of Warner Brothers come out and say they're pretty much done with the DC uh, Extended Universe, whatever you want to call it? Because it was shitty movies. Well, well, but that's my point. They had superhero. I mean, I'm just saying that if they think that it's going to work, doesn't mean it will work. But I, I've always said I'll give it a year from when it comes out. And if it's and like I said, they're having a, a sale because nobody bought this shit and Google's pulling stock back and their their stock is taking a hit because they made something and nobody went out and bought it. It didn't have value. It, yeah, I'll be like, yeah, you know, obviously streaming failed. But um, again, the same people said that the PSVR was going to fail. They said that the Switch again was going to fail and they were wrong. So obviously Nintendo, what did Nintendo know that these people didn't? And what, you know, what did, you know, what did, uh, you know, which got, what, I mean, they, they know stuff that we don't know. So it's just, yeah, I don't know. look at the Wii U, the Wii U failed though. Wait, wait, listen, they, they also said that gaming was dying. It was, everything was going uh, to be console, console was I mean, that. They, yeah, they, I mean they've 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 made a lot of wrong predictions, right? Remember yes, everything was going to yeah. everything was going to free to play, so companies was changing their their whole financial structures based right. on that guesstimation. And that Single player was dead. And they were wrong. The, on, the only thing that we know that has been the same for thirty five years is dedicated consoles. has been the dedicated consoles with the games to, uh, that's going to keep the people coming back. That's the only thing that's a sure shot. Right, right. All right, let's move on to the next topic. Hey, but before we move on, Stuart Stokes. Hey, I'm sorry for about the chat. Stuart Stokes, two dollar super chat. He says, Kratos, how you let LeBron talk that ish on multiplayer podcast? Oh shit, what happened? <laughs> you heard? Kratos. Yeah, can you, yeah, can you hear me? Oh yeah, you heard again? Yeah. He said, no, um, this is Stuart Stokes. He says, Hey, how you gonna let Baron talk that ish on multiplayer podcast? Hey man, uh, Baron is excommunicated. Oh yeah. Uh, we, me and uh, me and my main man Alex, we are boycotting. Yo, uh, we're we're boycotting. Baron's done until Metro Prime Four comes out. <laughs> yeah, we, <laughs> hey, we we won't hear from Baron again until they until Nintendo wins another NPD in about two or three months. Oh shit! So you know that's how that goes. Ruham, man, thank you for the super chat. Said what's good, PR seventy seven. What's up, panel? Nintendo runs the world according to Baron. Man, fucking Baron, bro. He's fucking hilarious. All right, man. Well, I appreciate the chat. Thank you, everybody, for rocking out with us. Um, we'll keep going down. Yeah, with that one topic. And Lionel B, he says, that's what I'm saying. How can Phil want his games to be on everything? Oh, shit. Screen just shot right past me. Mm -hmm. Let me hold on. Let me go back to Lionel B's thing. Oh, shit. That shit. Man, that shit just jerked right through it. Yeah, there we go. Back at it. He goes, that's what I'm saying. How can Phil want his games to be on everything but skip over console gamers that will actually buy gears on PS4? Phone gamers like easy to play games. And I agree with him because like gears is on PC, but it hasn't gained much sales traction at all. In fact, has 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 Xbox games sold more now that they're on PC? I can't see data that shows these games have significant increase in sales ever now that they're on PC. No. Have anybody seen data like that? No, but no, again, not Microsoft at all. Change that. I'll oh, go ahead, Jay. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead, brother. Well, go ahead. Uh, I'm asking the question. Has anybody seen yeah. data that because no, technically I, these games are on two platforms now? Correct. Yeah. Right? So like Gears, has Gears 5 benefit? I mean, Gears 4 benefited being on PC. In a sense of more sales, bigger user base. No, in my opinion, um, I think Gears was bigger when it was exclusive on 360. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's true. Yeah, that game came to 360. If it changed gaming. Yeah. When we were playing. Yeah, I agree with that. All right. Yeah. Jay Hart, thank you for um Super J says streaming is coming eventually. The people that generally come late to generations will get streaming boxes instead of if they work. Let's see about that. Um, thank you for the super chat. Thank you for the comment. 
Um, and scored, oh, and scoring Jay again. They will push hard for crossplay. That's going to be interesting how crossplay is going to factor in for next gen. Sony's well, still kind of a hardliner against it. Well, I think everything that's free to play, this is my opinion, everything that's free to play is going to be crossplay, at least going into next gen. If it's free to play, there's no reason not to make it crossplay. Yeah. I'm just wondering why Sony is such a hardliner. With um, uh, I mean, I get I, it. I don't point. think they trust. I don't think I personally. I don't think they trust Microsoft. Yeah. I agree. Uh, yeah. They don't trust the competition. And, and you, wrong, when you like, when you're think about it, when you're winning, right? When you're yeah. in the position that Sony's in, and uh, think about it, their money isn't long as Microsoft, so yeah. they can only take so so many risks. Yeah. And if we look back five years from now, right after they do cross play, they allow, and we look back five years from now, and that shit backfired. Uh. I mean, the, the, the whole company could go out of business. Hmm. Uh, so that is something where, like Craig said, I do believe, I don't think there's any risk with free-to-play games uh, being um, cross-play compatible. But again, Sony still wants to give you that reason to buy their platforms. And yes, the exclusives hmm. do that, but also the people that are in their, in their ecosystem, if they don't have to be forced to go out and buy that system and they can continue to play with their friends and stuff without it that gives you one less reason to go out and buy that system that yeah. means less money in for sony and so they're, they're the winners and i mean this generation so they're going to be looking at that you know every console sold is a is a is is money in the bank so just to have goodwill and say okay we'll, we'll be willing to give up you know a billion two billion three billion dollars uh just for goodwill because we like to be consume, consumer friendly. Come on, at the end of the day, these are these are corporations and mm -hmm. these are businesses. Uh, Microsoft is only doing it for one reason. It's because obviously uh, they're, they're, they're not the leader and it's obviously not working for them in the first place. So they really don't have a dog in the fight when it comes to that. Um, but it, it it's going to be great seeing next generation once they do get some games and everything starts from, you know, I guess it's going to start from scratch. But seeing if they will start touting sales numbers, see if they're going to talk about, you know, some of the crazy shit that they've said this. We're going to see if they're going to backtrack everything 100 uh, percent. We're going to see if they're going to be so uh, consumer friendly then mm -hmm. or will they backtrack if they, they start winning and selling a bunch of stuff? We're going to see. We're going to see that. I think I think I mean, I mean, the cosplay is neither here nor there for me is whatever. But like I, I already said. For cosplay to be for this movement to really be a movement, it has to come from EA, Ubisoft, Activision. I don't care what people say; it's not going to come from like Microsoft. They could jump and up and down until Nintendo. They Nintendo, Microsoft could jump up and down, and these small studios, you know, even Fortnite with Epic, whatever, they could all jump up and down. The prime movers are going to be EA, Activision, Ubisoft. Those three produce the majority of the biggest games and we're not just talking about one game like fortnite yes fortnite by itself is the biggest multiplayer game right but activision you know got destiny call of duty you know what i'm saying ea got battlefield and fucking now anthem you know what i'm saying they got multiple big multiplayer games you know and also ea got the maddens you know what i'm saying the fifa ufc you know ubisoft got uh, ghost recon for honor you know rainbow six you know, um, these companies, they pretty much have majority of the big multiplayer games on lockdown. You know, when you think of multiplayer game, chances are you're either playing an EA game, an Activision game, or Ubisoft game. You know what I'm saying? They own the lion's share. These are the guys that's going to decide if crossplay is a mainstream thing or not. It's not going to be a tiny studio that does Rocket League. It's not going to be them. You understand? You know, if EA comes out, we want UFC. FIFA, NBA Live, Madden, Anthem, Battlefield, Crossplay. That's like six or seven games. Like, you can't ignore that. Sony can't ignore that type of company, you know? If Ubisoft comes out, hey, we want, you know, fucking Division, Division 2, Rainbow Six, For Honor, Crossplay, all of them. That's something that you just can't ignore, you know? Those are the three companies that will that could potentially make Crossplay mainstream. But it has to come from them, you know what I'm saying? If it doesn't come from them, to be honest, Sony's probably like, whatever the fuck. You know what I'm saying? The biggest multiplayers are from them. They're the ones that are the prime movers. 
And those are the ones that's going to decide the fate for crossplay. If it doesn't come from them, then who? Who gives a fuck about everybody I'm surprised else? Surprised that the games that are not uh what I was told, shout out to my source. Everybody knows who my source is, Lou Waffa. Any game that's an esport game that's on console, they're looking to move to crossplay. They're already talking about it. So that includes Rainbow Six Siege. Yeah. So if they do that, that's how you get the movement started. It has to be UBA yeah. Activision. It has to be them. It has to be done. Yeah, it's not. It can't be up to the indie devs. Yeah, it's it's got to be something like that. Um, they could, in theory, the only indie dev I know that's actually mentioned it is uh, Hello Games with No Man's Sky. They've actually mentioned it. So I would expect them maybe in the next twenty months to try it with No Man's Sky just oh. to uh, just to see how how that. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, I, I I was told that any the games that are at the esport events, uh, that would be great, man. Because you know what I'm saying, especially for something like Madden. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. That yeah. would be huge, or NBA 2K. That would yeah. be huge to get PlayStation guys versus Xbox guys. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, because you already have Rocket League as a, as an esport game. It's cross play now. You have uh, the other one, Fort Pub, or whatever you want to call it. It's cross play now. So that's the direction they're headed. But since Sony is the big dog in the room, it, they can move house ever the speed they want. I agree with Jay. I don't think they trust Microsoft. Microsoft, they need it. They need cross play for Xbox to survive. PUBG, they shut down maps. I don't know if you all saw that. PUBG, they actually shut down maps because Microsoft, they didn't have enough people in the eco. But I heard that was a playtest server. It wasn't the actual full game. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, yeah. they didn't have enough people. And as soon as that story, before that story came out, Mike Yabba Dabba Do Yabara came out like 72 hours before that and said, boy, I wish we had crossplay on PUBG. Well, then that story breaks like, oh, yeah, well, here's why you want it. Because you all don't. <laughs> you guys' numbers are slipping. PlayStation say PUBG. I mean, the bottom line, let's give it, give it up for PlayStation. Most downloaded game in December was PUBG all for right. PlayStation. So <coughs> they saved that. They saved it because the Xbox community tag bailed on it, which I don't blame them. It was going eight frames a second. And uh, that's that's I know that's slow. I mean, you know, I ain't the fastest guy in the room, but I think eight frames a second, that's, um, that's bad, fam. All right. All right. <laughs> All right, moving on to the next topic. December MPD, we'll talk about quick like that. Nintendo Reign Supreme. You got to give props to them. Um, they ended up, uh, Switch ended up selling the most units for 2018, mm -hmm. primarily powered by the month of December. That sucker sold 1.7 million units mm -hmm. in December. Yeah. Holy shit. Um, for, for comparison's sake, um, PlayStation 4 sold around 700,000 units in December. Right. So so yeah. so Nintendo sold a million more consoles over than what PlayStation 4 did and that's why pushed it um to have the highest units sold in December. At the end of the year and, and oh at the end of the year too for for MPD it outsold I think it's over PlayStation by 300,000 units overall. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So December was a powerful month for Nintendo, you know, with yeah. um Super Smash Brothers an exclusive yeah, you know, and here's exactly. the thing. Look at look at Nintendo. Nintendo, this is a perfect example with the games. Nintendo, without third party, mm -hmm. was able to be the number one selling hardware device for the year, right? Um, it didn't have the Red Dead, didn't have Call of Duty. Um, I don't think it has I think it has 2K, but it doesn't have Madden, doesn't have Monster Hunter. Yeah. Um, you know what I'm saying? There was no planned games like Resident Evil 2 Remake, no Anthem, none of that. None of that stuff, right? None of, none of the good stuff, yeah. None of the good stuff, right? And it's the <laughs> number, number one selling device, right? But it's just doing it because of the exclusives, because of the Nintendo games. Mm -hmm. You know, well, it's the weakest yeah. hardware out of all of them. Yeah. The weakest device, you know? Yeah. But it's the games. It's just Nintendo games. People want to play Nintendo games. And that and that and that's and that and that's not. I, I mean, you could call me a pony, but this is not a Sony device that's doing it. Yeah, this is this is a Nintendo device. That's that's the number one selling device, right? And hell, Super Smash Bros. is like number five best selling game, and it only had like three weeks. Yeah, it's hard to do it. And they got Kirby, and he ain't got no pants. Yes, you. Oh shit. 
know. So, but that's my point. I mean, look, the people who who thought that device, if the people who are stuck on this, it's about power. Can you explain? Make it make sense. I've invited people to my podcast. What if it's about power? Why is the Switch doing better than the second world's most powerful console, the <laughs> Xbox One X? Why? If it's about power, it's technically it's the weakest console. It's well, the weakest yeah, device. Well, that's Period. my point. It's so it's got to be. So why is it selling the games? So yeah. I mean, and so when people try to explain. I mean, to these buttery simps in the Xbox community that it's always been about the games and the price point. Why is the Nintendo selling games and price point? Games and price point. So it, that's what it's always been about. So, I mean, that's, that's, I just don't, I mean, I don't, they have everything <laughs> you know, right in the face and they are just saying, no, it's over 1080p and 900p. That's how, that's how, like I said, like I said on my podcast the other day, full retard. In that community, so like I said, I just oh, you know. But you squeeze them, like I said earlier. If you squeeze them and you hug them to hug it out, butter comes out of their skin. So it's just that's just who they are as people. All right. So what you think about that, J Dub? Did you talk about the multiplayer podcast? Did Baron go in his bag? Yeah, he did. <laughs> and you know how that is. Before we start the conversation, uh, try to get him to. Tell us what was the 2018 Game of the Year award. I mean, who won the uh, 2018 Game of the Year? And he wouldn't do it. Uh, he would not do it. Oh, hell no. He's not going to do that. Yeah. So so he, he got through, you know, went through, his, <laughs> went through his rants about, you know, the Switch doing this and do that. And again, you know, I own up to it. I say, look, the Switch, uh, you know, it's success. It deserves all its success. You know, they have the what do you call it? The exclusive IPs that people like and enjoy. And it, 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 it deserves that credit. Um, not taking anything from it. Yes. It won the MPD. Good. That that's, that's good. Fine and dandy. All of that stuff. Uh, my only thing is I hope that this system can sustain it throughout mm -hmm. 2019. And I'm waiting for a revision because, you know, I, I got practically every switch game, but I'm I'm tired. I'm, I'm not going to buy the third party games anymore. I'm tired of them running like dog shit. And <laughs> while while a lot of people don't care for third party games on the Switch, I do. Uh, I do want to play 2K and WWE and Madden and all of these games. But I, you know, originally it didn't bother me for the first year, right? Because I'm thinking, well, it's going to take Nintendo and the developers some time to get used to the hardware, software updates, and stuff like that. But I just finally got to the point where this is not excusable anymore. Once you get to year two, um, there is no sense for them to be charging $60 for a game. The same that I can spend on the PlayStation or the Xbox and get the far superior 4K version of the game. There is no reason that these games should be running in such a horrible. I mean, we're talking about single digit frames. We're talking about resolution as low as 300 P. Um, that's just no excuse. And then you're charging full price for that. Uh, no mm -hmm. third party game, I believe, on the Switch should be should cost any more than twenty nine ninety nine, and so All I'm right. gonna make that I'm gonna make that hard stance. I'm not gonna buy any more of the third party games. They uh, the the first party games tend to run great. Nintendo, they you know they know what they're doing with their hardware, but uh, they also have IPs that are not graphically demanding, so that is benefit to them. Um, they're never gonna have any photorealistic games, uh, anything that pushes the the boundaries or whatever they do have some great gorgeous looking games but again they're not they're not pushing the hardware um you know to the limits or anything like that so that that's what that's my stand um hopefully they can continue the success hopefully they can come with a revision that'll make it better for me and people like me uh that do travel and like to have that small handheld companion um uh, and not have to lug around our playstations and xboxes and stuff like that since <laughs> <laughs> so you brought that up, we'll 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 we'll, we'll segue into Metroid Prime Four delay. Um, um. So report Nintendo announced that um development for Metroid Prime Four was in a terrible state. Um, some people described it in a hellish state. So they completely scrapped it. Um, and they handed the project um back over to retro studios who were the original developers of metroid prime they're the ones that created it right mm -hmm. so they scrapped up they scrapped the whole development cycle started over handed it over to retro so now it's in their hands 
Is that a bad way? I mean, it's obviously. How do you feel about Nintendo kicking off 2019 in this manner? Because this is how you start out. Like, if you look at the other platforms, we're talking about Resident Evil 2 Remake, which is out now, getting positive reviews. Um, Anthem Beta, people are looking forward to that. Kingdom Hearts 3, right? Um, and we'll talk a little bit about those games. And Days Gone. Days Gone got positive impressions from PAX. Yeah. A lot of positive stuff across the board, right? Yeah. Um, for multi plats and exclusives and stuff, and then Nintendo comes out and be like, Um, yeah, so Metro Prime 4 is crap right now, so we got to start over. Mm. How does that look for Nintendo, and what, what do they have upcoming over the next four months that could at least appease gamers? Um, I, I, I don't know, to tell you the truth, I don't know what the hell Nintendo has coming. Uh, within the next six months or this year, um, I think Metro Prime was one of the games that Baron was screaming to the top of his lungs for the the last year. Um, I, I really don't know, <coughs> and and it maybe may that may be a problem. That may be a big problem coming up for them. Um, again, right now everybody's playing Resident Evil, uh, the Anthem demo. Um, what else? Uh, Kingdom Hearts, Hearts coming out Tuesday. So all of these games, right, that Nintendo guys are not going to be able to play. And these are some big games, so huge opportunities. Uh, and then the fact that Mortal Kombat is going to come out later and it's going to run much crappier, lower resolution, pretty much, a you know, they said they have to build a different engine to get it to run. That, you know, that that's not very um, encouraging for 2019. Maybe they can pull it out. Maybe they have some new mario game that they're gonna pull out you know you know i'm looking forward to luigi's mansion uh i think that's supposed to drop this year but i mean shit you know i may have to wait to december to get that game i don't know so mm. it's it's gonna be interesting to see how the next six months line up with mpds and stuff like that and and and, and how they're gonna do people are gonna continue to buy the switch because um again it's it's a portable game it's a portable system, and that's something that's kind of lacking in the uh, in the market. Yes, you got the 3DS, but you know that's more catered to the kids, and the Switch is more you know towards the uh, the adult. I figure the more adult crowd with the price range. So we'll see. Um, you know, good luck to them. But like you said, it's not encouraging <laughs> that your biggest game that everyone was looking forward to. Uh, you know, they basically. Scrap that game, and they're gonna let somebody else build it from scratch. So, and we all know that that is going to take another three to four years uh, to come out. So, I don't know. Hopefully, they got some else to replace it. Now, I give Nintendo props for being transparent and <coughs> for not canceling the game. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. That's why I'm not gonna be too hard on them. I mean, yeah, I'm talking shit. You know, I do a little come side. You know, to antagonize, have a little fun, but I give them props. Because, yes, they recognize something's wrong, so we cannot really... We know Nintendo believes in quality products, at least in terms of their first party. They try to release, and when there's something's wrong, they're just not going to release it and then be like, all right, we'll just patch it or nothing. They're going to be like, you know what? We're not liking what we're seeing. We're scrapping the project altogether. We're going to let the people know, but it's not canceled. It's just, it's just going to start over, you know? That I could respect... Because people will still eventually, even if it's 2023, mm -hmm. they're still going to play Metro Prime 4, which is more than I can say for um, Scalebound. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. You understand what I'm saying? And again, Nintendo doesn't have Microsoft's money. But yet they're dedicated in making sure that this game comes out quality and that it does come out. Even if it won't be for another four years, it's going to come out. Yeah. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So I give them props for that. I give them, I give Nintendo. That's games right there. That's a gaming company. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? That's a company that knows we have to release this game, and we're gonna do it, and they're gonna what? get the respect for it. Sure, we're talking shit now, but when it does come out, it's probably gonna be a fantastic game, and they're gonna get props over it. Of course. The good thing about it, Porter Rock, is like uh, like you said, you don't want people constantly. Uh, look Look at Crackdown 3, right? People have been asking Phil them about that game for, for what, five years. Every time they see him, they ask him about it. You don't want people hounding you about that game. So go ahead and be honest up front. Get it out the way so people can shut up and leave you alone about it yeah. and move on to something else. Yeah, because no one's going to bother Nintendo now. Everybody knows. Hey, the Nintendo went out and says, hey, we started over. 
Yeah. So guess what? We'll start talking to you in about three years. When it's you know when, that what they just did with Resident Evil too. Didn't they start it one way and then they said no, we're just gonna redo it or something like that or make sure it's, they, they did it differently. I know that. Mm. So they went from just a pure remaster, I guess, to a remake. So, yeah, uh, the remake was a good decision. I agree, but uh, but I, and I agree with you all. I think a I think a uh, a slowdown or a delay is better than a cancellation. They didn't scale down it. And uh, so and that's the main thing. And I agree with what you said, Porter Rock. It may be three to four years, but it's it's coming, you know, so they have that to look forward to. So and who knows? Maybe there's another Nintendo device out by then. Yeah, I made a joke that um, by the time Metro Prime comes out, it's going to come out right along with Spider-Man 2 on the PS5. <laughs> yeah, some awesome. people didn't like that joke. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. So Dave's gone. Um, positive impressions from PAX. Even I was surprised. Yeah. Um, okay. I do have my concerns after getting burned by Red Dead Redemption 2. I will never trust another open world game outright again. <laughs> um, um, but, um, I want to see what you guys think, but here's my thing. So from what I seen, it look, you know, I seen, uh, I seen people record themselves playing it at PAX. I see some videos and stuff. Um, it looks great. It looks fantastic on a technical level, you know. Um, but I said the same thing about Red Dead Redemption 2. These are my concerns. All right. My concern is number one, the motorcycle is no different than the horse. You're fucking riding it around excessively because the mission structure is fucking so far out, which I hope is not like that. I hope the mission structure. You can get there. I mean, granted, if it's open world, I'm sure people want to explore. I listen, I have no issue with exploring. If you want to explore the world, cool. Okay. But I think mission structure should be quick and accessible. It shouldn't be dragged out with traveling. That because to me, that shit traveling I, I is totally, crap. I game. totally agree. I totally agree. What you're doing, right? You're saying that this game is 60 hours, but technically you're driving. It's nine because yeah, you're driving really nine, 41 yeah. to, for fucking exactly. 51. You're forcing people. Yeah. To, you know, and technically, if you could uh, not teleport, but if you could do that quick fast, fast travel, travel you, you'll be done with the game in 10 hours. You I know, agree funny, with that. So Assassin's Creed Syndicate, that game came out what, 2016, two years ago, three years ago, right? Yeah. I'm playing it now, right? Mm -hmm. So the whole map of London, England, whatever is huge. It's fucking huge, right? Yeah. But there's fast travel points everywhere. So you, so you do a mission like, oh, I want to do this mission right here, right? Because you see the icon. You fast travel to that area, right? Yeah. Obviously, you have to walk there first because, you know, you have to do the whole eagle eye vision. But once you do it, it becomes a fast travel point. So now once you do all that, the whole map has strategic fast travel point. So any mission, it puts you within 100 meters, like within running distance. You don't do excessive traveling in Assassin's Creed. And there's mission all over the map. You know, I don't believe in excessive traveling just to travel. Granted, it's an open world. If you choose to just get on your bike and just go and explore, that's cool. Gamers should do that. But if I want to knock out missions, I should not be forced to fucking ride a motorcycle or ride a horse for like 10 minutes just to get to the mission and then do it. And now I got to ride back. Uh, and then along the way, some asshole wants to be like, oh, my horse died. Can you drive me to town? No, I'm not riding you to town. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In fact, I'm going to shoot you in well, your head and shoot you. That's I, what I, I got, did. Like, you're dead. Ride. I got to that point too where I'm not doing you, that no more. You just get tired and you say, I don't want to do any side missions or anything. I just want to go to this, yeah, do this and leave. Yeah. And so I, mean, like, I have some old lady side lady. Oh, kind sir, my horse died. Would you help me? No, bitch. Fuck out of here. Yeah. You, well, you well, live you live where is that Denise? Hell no. Well, let's get real. Uh, I did not think Days Gone would be the top zombie game this year, but it's going to be because say it with me, kids, Red. This Resident Evil 2 apparently has fake HDR, and we all know that no, uh, no the one other cares about Days that. Gone is going to have real HDR. No so. one cares about HDR. Yes, they don't. <laughs> no, we, we don't care. Did. Oh, my God. It's the facade. You got suckered. Y'all got, got really suckered with that. HDR. Uh, HDR, yo, J-Dub, am I lying? Yo, everybody was talking about HDR like almost every day. When yeah, it was, it was, now yeah. nobody talks about it. Yeah. Well, because it's so delicious. Until yeah. you see something without it. Yeah, it, no one cares. 
So yeah. yeah There's that's no that's delicious wrong. that people who are playing a fake HDR think it's real HDR. Well, they're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I can say. They're wrong. Oh, yeah. So, Oh they, super, oh, yeah, I, I'm like, excited for it now. I, I did something I think called pre-order. So um, yeah, I mean that's I can't believe I pre-ordered. So I got that and MLB the show ready to on smoke. Day. Yeah, no. So J Dub, you know, yeah, we're your one and done Houston Astros. How, how oh, are you feel about these guys? Lord. You know I'm gonna fuck with you all the time. I know, I know. I'm gonna let you know. <laughs> MLB, MLB, MLB Major Leagues put on notice. Right, hey, the best bullpen in baseball now belongs to the Yankees. Oh Lord, the best bullpen statistically. Yo, oh, they're gonna Lord. kill motherfuckers, bro. Oh, we Lord. could we could we could we could bench our starters in the third inning. Uh, they don't even need to play five innings now. How hey. many they need they you just do good for three innings? That's all we need from our starters. Just three innings. We got the rest. Listen, put <laughs> a rock, put a rock. For decades, yeah, the damn Yankees, right? Think about it. They have the biggest wallet in all the MLB, pretty much in all of sports. New York has the biggest wallet in a pretty in all of sports. Yeah, they've always had nothing but Hall of Famers on their teams. That's nothing new. The mere fact that you guys can't keep uh winning championships year after year after year after year is more surprising to me. No, but, okay. uh, baseball, you know, again, that's what I love about baseball because baseball is the team is too big for one player or two yeah. players to. That's what I love about baseball. Yeah, it's not man. like basketball. Basketball, one player literally, yeah, can change the game. You know, like Jordan. Jordan was really the main yeah. force behind the Bulls. You know, LeBron. Yeah, LeBron, yeah, yeah like, right. like look at Cleveland. They're yep. trash because yep. of one guy left. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I love about baseball. That's nobody, true. nobody in baseball. Not not even a pitcher can say that because yeah, a pitcher does everything, but that pitcher only plays one game. Yeah, it's uh, there's multiple games, so other pitchers have to key in, have to come in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. even one pitcher can't say, "Oh, I'm the key to success." Like no, because even in the World Series, maybe at best, most of the time you'll probably get two games in the World Series, maybe three if they really need to push stretch it, it out. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah. at best, a pitcher gets two games. But that's you know what? That's, here's the thing, though. Baseball has the most games of any sport. Yeah, 162 right. games. Yeah, man. Compared to you know, everyone else, yeah, the motherfucking playoffs. Yeah, exactly. Let's, let's not make this a sports show because everybody's like, okay, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All uh, right. So, days gone. so what do you think about days gone? And oh man, I want to Astros again. <laughs> In fact, that, 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 that should be the name of the Houston Astros. Days gone. Hey, we, we, we still riding high from our trophy <laughs> from, from last year. So, but um, days gone, you know, again, I, I'm st I still think the game is going to be uh rated higher than most people think. I still have faith in that game. I'm still looking forward to that. I do like zombie games. I, you know, I'm a big fan of the uh, state of the K the series, uh, part even though part two let me down. Um, Obviously, you got games like The Last of Us that's obviously going to kill it. Um, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, it's good for me to see that now more people are seeing what this game, you know, what potential this game have. And again, keep 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 this in mind, right? Sony's finally at that point in the generation. It's almost like they can't do anything wrong. They really can't. Oh man, don't curse them now. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm not going to curse it. I'm just saying. I'm being very modest. I'm being very modest, right? They're at the point where they're in their stride. And so yeah. that's that's a very good thing. And so, I mean, how 2018 played out and how this 2019 is going to play out. And uh, I, I'm glad they did push the game back because that game going against Anthem and Kingdom Hearts and some of the other bigger games, it would have got lost in the shuffle, which Sony is known for doing. They did it with Gravity Rush 2. You know, he stuck that game around, you know, all these other games like Kingdom Hearts 2.8. Uh, MLB, um, you know, the, the Horizon Zero Duns and all that. I mean, you know, you, you can't you can't do that. You have to find a perfect time to put your game where it can shine by itself. And uh, it looks like, look what they did with Detroit, right? They, they launched that pretty much in the same similar time frame, something where nothing is really by it. You know, you got your big one out the door, uh, then you let Detroit go, and, and they're going to do that with that. So I'm, I'm looking yeah, for I'm it. It looks good. Marketing it looks good. Yeah. For this game, I'm wondering yes. what marketing stunt, you know, because they they did Sony. Listen, if they if they, I don't care if you're a fanboy, or whatever. Everyone has to give props to Sony for how they market their big games. Oh, they yeah. have been 
off yeah. the fucking chain yes. with their marketing. They have been absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. You know, in fact, a lot of Xbox gamers are complaining about Crackdown 3's lack of marketing, which I agree. Zero marketing. <laughs> like, and the game is coming out like in two, three weeks. weeks. Yeah. And nothing. So Sony's been on point with their marketing. So, you know, so it's interesting to see Days Gone and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah. So one thing, uh, I think it's Gold Chain Gamer. I think it was him that was at PAX. Yeah. And they were watching him play. And there was one part he was trying to run away from the freakers. I guess that's what they're called, freakers, whatever. Yeah, because they're uh, alive. And he just put it. They're like, like he was all he was overwhelmed. Yeah. And then the guy's like, ah, oh, you died. And that's that's one thing I already like because I saw him controlling the game, so the controls look good, unlike yeah. Red Dead. Um, and the game looks and the game potentially based off that one scene, it looks like it's challenging. Yeah, which these are key things for games controls and challenge you don't want to play an easy game and just go through it mm -hmm. and you don't want to play a game with bad controls you know what i mean yeah um so i think i think so far from that aspect at least the control and from that one little part that looks difficult mm -hmm. i kind of like that so i'm hoping you know the game provides a good challenge the controls are good and you can quickly access the missions you know sure i'm going to try to explore and drive but don't force me to drive because that's going to drive me fucking nuts. Well, it's espe especially you, oh, Puerto Rock. Oh, yeah. You're the anti car, anti vehicle person. Oh, my God. I'm a, yeah, I'm going to flip out. I'm going to flip out. <laughs> hey, here, here's the thing, though. One thing I do like about the game is you have to maintain your motorcycle uh, because yeah. if you don't, it's going to break down. And you, think about it. You yeah. can't outrun these freakers. That, uh -huh. that They already acknowledge that. Oh, too fast. yeah, yeah. They're too fast. Damn. Yeah. So you're going to have to strategize on how you're going to take out the horde and what booby traps you're going to set and, you know, how do you do this and how you do this. So I, I, I like that. I really like it. And the graphics look amazing. It looks like a Sony game, uh, caliber game. Yeah. You know, it, it looks it, like it, it does. Like, when, actually, when, you, yeah. when you see that screen that says Sony Computer Entertainment, you, you know yes. what's the game. Yeah, you know what you're getting. <laughs> All right. It's, it's like that Nintendo seal of approval, right? Yeah, that's the that's the new Nintendo seal of approval. Yeah, you're right. Um, Anthem beta's coming out. Mm. Do, do we play it yet? I played the alpha uh on PC, I enjoyed okay. it. Beautiful game. Uh, I can't wait to play it right now. Earlier, you know, I'm supposed to be running with a group right now on the Xbox, and the servers are down. Oh. So I'm downloading a demo on PC so I can capture some footage and and post and stuff like that. So it's I, I don't understand how these guys can have these games, right? The these services, and yet time after time after time, they can't get the servers right. They can't get the connections right. You know, oh, yeah. you have a couple of million people, right? You gave out all these codes, you know how many people you have, yeah. and yet. You still fail. I don't. I. I would never understand that. That happens all the time too. All I, the time. If, like all the. I don't get it. I, I. I literally don't get it. You know, you have these millions of people. To be honest, I sometimes think. I mean, that's really what a beta is for. But I think they they do these betas and they hand out as much codes as possible. Because to be honest, they should just call it what it really is. It's not a beta. It's a stress test. That's exactly. really what it is. That's exactly. what it is. Just say it. Just tell yeah. people, hey, we're sending out codes to do a stress test. Yeah. Yes, but, the beta, we want you to play the game, but keep in mind, the server's probably going to crap out. Listen, <laughs> it's probably going to shut the fuck down. I, I don't want I don't to right? Yeah, You probably won't get access to the game for like three days. <laughs> this is the this is the demo, right? This is the demo. It's not, it's, yeah, it's not even a full this game. This game is already gold, right? The game is already gold. It's a print. It's sitting in storage. Store. Uh, it's sitting in the back of uh, the stores and everything. It's it's ready. And they can't. You know what do they expect day one? If this is just a demo, what are you expecting launch day? People don't want to spend sixty five dollars, come home, and can't play their game. That, you know, so this may cause Anthem to not get a ton of sales. Right now, you have millions of pissed off people. As I say, Jay, do you think that this could scare some people who are on the fence? On yes. the fence about you think it scares them off, maybe? Listen, the mere fact that this is EA, y'all know how gamers feel about EA and, the, and all the negative publicity that EA has been getting lately. On top of this, this is enough to, you know, and then the mere fact that this game is launching 
around the same time that a bunch of other great games are launching. You can spend that sixty-five dollars on Resident Evil Two, Kingdom Hearts. Um, uh, what's some other games that are coming up uh, right alongside it? You know, games like that. I mean, yeah. so I don't know, man. This I don't know, but man. If your face is tired yet, so <laughs> the Xbox community waiting on the thing to start working. <laughs> yeah, man. This is uh, this is a, and this is not exclusive to EA. Uh huh. But it's EA's problem right now because it's in their lap, right? It's 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 in their lap. They had to hold the debacle with Star Wars uh, Battlefront two. Now they got this. Well, and my face is tired. <laughs> Remember that Mass yeah. Effect Andromeda. My yeah, EA, EA hasn't been on a high note lately, you know, and that's and that's and that's um that's a concern for Anthem. I mean, I know I don't blame each game. Each game is you know its own unique game, but. The corporate suits is still EA, and Bioware still falls under EA. You know, and and I guess the the demo doesn't show the economy behind Anthem. That's not part of the demo, so the economy is totally different. Which means we don't really know how the whole grinding and all that shit is gonna play out. Microtransactions, we don't know nothing about that. You know what I'm saying? So there are concerns that EA can ruin the Anthem experience. By doing some fuckery, you know, <laughs> similar to what they did with Battlefront. I mean, it's potential. We're not saying that it is going to happen, but don't be shocked if Anthem economy, you know, is fucked up because EA once again try to do slick shit to maximize money at the cost of releasing a proper game, you know. You know, yeah. so of course we're gonna give the game its own proper due and actually play it and see for ourselves. But if the economy behind Anthem is screwed up, it would not shock me because it's EA. EA hasn't been on point, you know, and stuff like that. Even with Madden, with the mutt, people are getting sick of that shit, too, with the yeah. mutt, you know, the oh, man, yeah, Mark, you know. You super chat. He said you got to pay the bills. Van Lamont, what's going on? He says, I think y'all forgot Mortal Kombat 11 launched the same week as Days Gone, and I got the collector's edition of Days Gone pre-ordered. The Dreams beta is amazing. Um, that's true, man. That's damn. That that is that's a lot of fucking games, bro. Twenty nineteen yeah. is already. Uh, yo, I ain't, I ain't got time for a new console. And we well, six months in, and uh, this, this is already we're at yeah. what almost ten games. Yeah. Shit. The, the good the good thing about it, the good thing about it, right? With it's Days Gone is, it's it's a whole different genre. Yeah. So it's it's not like it's a fighting game. It's not like it's Soul Calibur Six going against uh, Mortal, Mortal Kombat. Kombat. Yeah. You're not going in the store. Picking a boat, saying uh, which one do I buy? You know, because they're both fighters. You're not. Yeah, that, you so. you know you know what you want. If you want a exactly. fighter, Mortal Kombat 11. If exactly. you want a single player adventure experience, this is one thing though. And I mentioned this in my review for RDR two. All right, mm -hmm. the one thing that's giving me confidence behind Days Gone is the fact that there's no multiplayer, and I'm gonna explain why. I know some people hearing me might think like, "What the fuck you're talking about, Porter Rock?" Yeah. Because there's no multiplayer. They can focus on the single 100%. player and make sure that the single player is right. Yeah. My issue with Rockstar, I think we lost them to the multiplayer. I think we lost them to the online transactions, to the games as a service. Um, yeah. I think that's their focus. And because they put so much focus on that, because they want Red Dead to be as successful as Grand Theft Auto V, but in a sense as the online gag games as a service model, they missed the mark on the single player. So the controls, the mission layout, all those things, they don't really care. Because really what they cared about is the design of the world, which which read that <laughs> the design of the world is beautiful. There's there's no arguing that. The technical design behind Red Dead Redemption 2 is phenomenal. That whole open world is beautifully designed on yeah. a technical level. But that's the world that the online multiplayer uses. So, of course, that's going to be on point. But the specific single-player aspects suck. A lot of it sucks. You know, yeah. the mission layout is messed up. The controls suck. Yeah, you got a lot of side quests, but they're pretty much useless because you don't really need to do them because the game is not hard. So they didn't even try to make the single-player game challenging. So that way, you'd be like, man, these, these, you know, these gangs and all that, you know, the NPCs that are shooting back, they're really killing me. I mean, let me do some of these side missions and these huntings so I could build tree kits and all this stuff so I could boost my stats. That's what the whole thing is for. But the game is easy. 
Yeah. So you don't need to do any of that stuff. You're killing everybody easily. You know what I'm saying? And and the game is pretty much auto lock on. But that's because but but the online was funny. Somebody brought up um because when I mentioned that, somebody replied with a comment saying, Damn, Porter Rock, you 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 on point because I play the online. They are up to date with all the bullshit when it comes to online. That they got on Smash. They have all the tricks. Horse insurance. Buying gold for five dollars, ten dollars, the economy, all yeah, the bells, and, all the bells and whistles of a games of the service. Rockstar is on point with their online. They have everything up to date. There is nothing missing in Red Dead Online to make a proper games as a service type online environment. They have it all. It's all there. Games as a service, right down to a T. But to the single player, something simple as controls, bro. Like, how do you fuck that up? Yeah. Fucking yeah. controls. You see what I'm saying? Like you said, that, that's what happens when you have to split your teams and your talent to focus on a vast array of things versus staying concentrated on the end goal and the one thing. And and another thing, Puerto Rock, and this is probably the reason why. Now a lot of these developers feel like that because we have these downloads and, and because they got patches and stuff, oh, we'll just fix the controls later. Or we'll just fix that later. So they get to the point where they sell you this broken <laughs> game that's technically broken or this half-assed game, and they feel like, ah, we, we have plenty of time. We'll just fix it, you know, fix it in the next six months, and, like, it's okay. And that's that's not okay because if we start accepting that, then little by little we're gonna start getting little pieces of games. You know, we're gonna they're gonna release a game and sell it to us for sixty bucks with one level and tell you, well, you get the rest of the levels later. We yeah. already got the we already got the cracking with no uh, with nobody. Then, you know, <laughs> oh, shit. Then, and then they remove that, right? Oh, yeah. you don't need that. And, and, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, a full sixty dollar game, you know? What do you mean they remove the crack? Yeah, the cracking yeah, was yeah, the cracking. Yeah, they they yeah, they never. Well, it's funny it. they said because it was like there was issues. It was causing issues with the game. That made me laugh even more. Oh, it was like a next. It, 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 it was it was it was, four, it was four tentacles. It wasn't even. Yeah. A <laughs> yeah, it wasn't attached to anything. Well, I wonder if that dreams game will let you make a crack. Because somebody tweeted me and said it's a game about making a game. So what if you could make Sea of Thieves in that game? Well, if, have you have you ever played Little Big Planet? Me? Uh, yeah. yeah, a long time ago. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's it's a it's a game, right? You you can create, but there's all there's already content there for you, and okay. other creators have already created. You can download levels and stuff. Download, yeah, yeah. So if if you know about these kids, they play Minecraft, Roblox, and stuff yeah. like that. There's already a shitload of content there. <laughs> now, right. if you if you decide to be the creative one, you can create your own level or game or design or whatever you want. But it's not mandatory. Okay. So going in day one, you're gonna have a shitload of content. It's a you know it's a, it's a game. What impressed uh, me but, was the PT demo. Yes, PT demo. I Sonic. didn't think you were able to do Art something like that. Uh, what's the uh, what's the EA game? Dead Space. They created Dead yeah. Space. Uh, Super That's Mario hard. Brothers. They now created granted, that. Now, granted, they didn't create the full game yet. They created like a little snippet, but the graphics and the character design, the environmental yes. design, yes, is pretty impressive. For but think if you think if you put the. Brawling? Think if you put the time into it, though. Yeah, probably. like yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like when the game time, yeah. releases, I guarantee somebody's gonna release a a full fledged triple A. You know, like, let's say like a double A, a full fledged yeah. double A, nice looking game. This is what I think. horror games. That shit's gonna be full of horror games because some of the horror games I've seen, I'm like, oh shit. Listen, yeah. I've. With, with dreams, right? After I saw that guys can make Dead Space, Sonic, Mario, um, PT, I said it's 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 funny that Sony has a game where you can actually create a better version of an Xbox game. So I put a tweet out and I said I'll pay two hundred fifty dollars to anyone to the first person that creates Scalebound inside of Dreams. So you know that there's people right now, <laughs> yeah, somebody. working on that, creating that. I mean, that, it's just nuts, man. That's nuts. Yo, so I'm impressed, like, because Dreams was not on my radar at all. Yeah, me. You know, because I didn't care about Little Big Planet that much. Yeah. But when I saw that PT demo, I'm like, yeah, uh, um, I'm gonna get this because somebody's gonna create a good horror game. Somebody's gonna put in the time. Someone's gonna put in the effort because look at look at Minecraft. There's people who built like fucking London. 
in that fucking game. Somebody will put in the time in games if you give them creative um, capability. Someone's going to create a dope ass fucking, you know, fucking game in there. And I want to play it. Yeah. All right. So last last topic, unless um Craig, you got anything on dreams? Uh no, I'm really looking forward to it. I do have an idea for a VR game. Uh, I want to run it by J Dub when he gets a chance, maybe over the weekend. Uh give me a call, J Dub. Just wanna Definitely. see what you think. So cool. yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. Final um RE2 remake. Um so you guys, who, did you guys buy it? What platform? I I have it, but uh, it's got fake HDR, so I'm disappointed. May go oh back to the <laughs> and I'm waiting on all the uh, <laughs> on uh, Ace Combat, so yeah. I got Resident Evil too. Yeah. So yeah, I got, I'm about five hours in. Mm-hmm. I said I'm about five hours in oh. to uh, Resident Evil Seven. So mm-hmm. okay, is that VR? Uh, no, 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 it, it doesn't support VR right now. Okay. I don't know if it ever will because it's a third it's a third person game so I can understand why they don't it it wouldn't work out um like Resident Evil 7 which was a first person. Yeah, cuz they went with the uh, RE4 formula. Yeah, the yeah. Yeah. Vice Star the yeah. Vice the uh, Resident Evil yeah. first person formula. Yeah, and it makes sense, right? It makes you, sense. You are remaking this classic. I mean, that is that's the that's the epicenter of what PlayStation One was about, and so you want to keep true to that formula, true to that style, true to. I mean, they really did a great job. I when I popped the game in and I played it, I really feel like I'm back in fucking 1990, uh, whenever the PlayStation One was out or whatever, you know, 1996, whatever. Uh, I really feel like this is the feeling that I had back then when I was playing. Resident Evil One and Two, and this it brought, brought back so many memories. So um, they did a great job. It's a great job. Great sound. The graphics are, are great. Uh, Top notch graphics. Uh, it runs for what four K sixty on um, on all the platforms. So I think um, you know I think everybody, everybody's happy. Yeah, you don't you don't run four K sixty on my platform. Uh, oh well, you, that, yeah, well. Uh, yeah, because you got the you got the slim, but yeah. You know, so you know. don't say all. Okay, yeah. well, check, I, I, yourself. I you <laughs> check <What> yourself. Check <laughs> yourself. Yeah, Resident Evil. If you still talk about Resident Evil, it doesn't. It's not 4K. It's like 16, 28. It's checkerboard on the Xbox X though. And according well, to uh, again, again, you know. Mm-hmm. Anything above 1080p, according to Microsoft, is 4K. So that's why I say it is 4K. I'm just just using Microsoft's metric. (laughs) Hey, what about Digital Foundry saying that it it was sharper on the Pro than it is on the Xbox X? Uh, I I, I didn't feel like getting attacked, sir, so I'm just leaving that. Uh, I'm going to leave that alone. All right, people. It's fucking... It's almost 4 in the morning out here in Germany. Um, Yeah. So I'm about to hit the rack, but anyway... Um, let me give, give our outros. We'll start with Craig Harris. Oh, hey, thanks for the vine. Thanks for everybody coming by. Hit that like button. Uh, another good 60 frames, no lag, and uh, play the games, people. Well, there you go. And of course, the God himself, Kratos. Yo, yo, it's been great. Uh, it's your boy J Dub, aka Kratos, the God of PlayStation and all things gaming. Here again on 60 frames, no lag. Make sure you hit that thumbs up, hit that like, subscribe. Uh, you guys can find me on Twitter, kicking up dust at JW City 16, keeping you guys laughing with the gifts and the memes. You know what I mean? Uh, again, brothers, it's always great. Um, chopping it up with you guys, talking about video games. Uh, let's go get it. All right. Hey, thanks for coming out and showing up, guys. And for everybody else, I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, this is your boy, Puerto Rock 77 your only friend these YouTube streets, sounding like shit. Um, but I hope you enjoyed the show and the conversations that we had today, all right? We'll see you again next week, and we'll see what more fuckery we get throughout the whole <laughs> week in gaming. Uh, maybe, hey, this weekend, maybe we could do some Anthem beta on PlayStation. Definitely. Free is, it, is it free coming out next weekend? No. Is it's, it a- it, what? Anthem? Next week, next week is it? Is it an open beta next weekend for everybody? No, uh, uh, as far as I, I know, it's it's open right now. It's open right now. Yeah, I, I didn't need any code to download. So okay. Oh, I thought you needed a code. Oh, I may go ahead and try to do that. Then. All right. Yeah.
Yeah. All right. Take take it easy, guys. All right. Take care, everybody. Thanks for showing up. Hope you enjoyed the show. See you next time. Peace. Peace.